work semi cooperatively in this puzzle deduction game where you need to figure out the secret recipe from Grandma Evelyn in Secret Recipe. And today we'll be teaching you how to play Secret Recipe, game designed by Blaj Freebar and Nika Mlinaric Freebar, and published by Snowboard Games. And hello everyone, it's Stella. And Tarrant here from Meeple University. All right, let's get to the classroom. In Secret Recipe, Grandma has retired from baking and now is looking to pass on her Secret Recipe book. To determine who is most worthy to receive it, each player has received a fragment of the book and must now use logic deduction to determine what the recipes are. Players will give clues to their opponents about their own recipes in order to be allowed to gain information about the secret recipes as they try to work out who has what tokens. You'll win points when you guess your opponents and when they guess you. And whoever has scored the most points by the time the recipes are revealed will be the winner. To set up, each player chooses a colour and takes its score marker, nine fingerprints and four think markers, as well as a player board, recipe board, discussion card and pen. Also give each player a player coloured stand, this allows them to put their player board up and keep it hidden from the other players. Place all players' score markers at zero. Place the stack of tea break tokens between steps five and six and shuffle the hexagonal point tokens into this space. Secret Recipe is a game of deduction. Among the components, there are 25 small recipe ingredient tiles, which have this back, and 25 large pantry ingredient tiles with this back. The composition of tiles in each stack is also shown at the top of each player's player board. So you'll have two each of these ingredients, three of these ingredients, and so on. Shuffle the larger pantry ingredients in the bag and deal nine face up to the board, leaving the rest in the bag for later. Shuffle the smaller recipe ingredient tiles face down and deal one to each of the nine recipe shelf spaces and deal four tiles face down to each player's recipe board. If you're playing with three players, deal four to a neutral recipe board as well. It is necessary that all 25 of the recipe tiles are in play. Note that at the time of filming, the variant for two players is still in development. Secretly mark the information you know on your player board. There is a section for each of the four players, including yourself. And right now, all you'll know is your own ingredients. Mark your own name in the row, and to try to avoid getting rotation mixed up, Mark whichever plate, left or right, matches your viewpoint of this plate on your recipe board. Now secretly look at each of your recipe ingredients, circle that ingredient in its position of the row, and cross out one of that ingredient from the top row. Do this across all four ingredients. Do not mark the ingredients on your recipe board, do not show your ingredients to your opponents, and do not show your player board to your opponents. Set up a row for each other player on your player board based on how you're viewing their board. For blue sitting here, I can see purple with the plate on the left, and I can see green and red with the plates on the right. It's best to play this game with two players each side of the table. If you're playing a three-player game, then flip the four ingredients that were dealt to the neutral recipe board face up. All players can now cross those four ingredients off because they know that they are not among the face-down ingredients that remain. Choose a first player who takes the basket, the clue token, and the three clue markers. You're now ready to play. Secret Recipe is played in turns, starting from the first player and going clockwise around the table. Each turn is resolved in two steps. First the actions phase, where the active player gives a clue and everyone gains information about the hidden ingredients. And then the discussion phase, in which players may make guesses about the hidden ingredients, scoring points if they're right. Within the game, you want to be able to work out what the other player's recipe ingredients are. And you want the other players to work out what your ingredients are, because both of these will earn you points. 
You'll need to keep balancing both objectives in mind as you choose your actions. As the first step of their turn, the active player may optionally swap out one pantry ingredient. Discard one ingredient tile face up from the board and then randomly replace it with a new tile drawn from the bag. If the bag is ever empty, return discarded tiles back to the bag. Next, the active player uses the pieces in the basket to give a single clue about one of the ingredients in their recipe. Start by taking the clue arrow token and then placing it next to one of your four ingredients on either the ingredient side or the weight side. Then place the yes, no, or greater or less than token in an appropriate row or column of the pantry. Here for example, I'm giving a clue about this ingredient, which is flour. I could place this tick token here. It means that that ingredient is one of the three ingredients in that row or column of the pantry. All opponents now know that this ingredient is cream, flour, or honey. In the same way, it would be legal for me to place this here or here. If I pick a row or column which does not contain that ingredient, then I use the cross marker. This tells my opponents that this ingredient is not mint, strawberries, or eggs. The other type of clue you can give is a weight clue. Each ingredient tile shows its weight in the bottom left corner, and this is a number between 1 and 5. When giving a weight clue, you use the tick if there is any pantry ingredient in that row or column of the same weight. Flour had weight 5, so this or this would both be valid clues. If there's no pantry ingredient matching the weight, then you use the cross token. This, this, or this would all be valid clues for the flower. For a weight clue, you could also choose to use the greater than or less than clue. If the weight is greater than all ingredients in that row or column, you can place as greater than. If it's less than them all, then you can place as less than. And if it's somewhere in the middle, then you cannot place a greater or less than clue. Once you've finished your clue, it's now time for all players to gain information and make notes on their player board. For you as the active player, you now get to secretly look at the recipe shelf ingredient which you placed your clue token next to. This gives you at least a single step you can cross off at the top of your board. Place one of your fingerprints next to the clue. This isn't a memory game, you can go back and check that at any time. Your opponents can now take the information they've learned and note down any deductive conclusions they can from that information. Once the actions phase is complete, you now move to the discussion phase, where each player may optionally make a single guess about the identity of one opponent's ingredient. Simultaneously, players may make a guess on their discussion cards before they're revealed and resolved in turn order from the current active player. There are two types of guess you can make, a think guess and a collect guess. A think guess is low risk, low reward. That is, you'll never lose points for getting one wrong, but you'll only score one point if you get it right. To make a think guess, write the player's name that you're guessing about, mark the position of their plate for clarity, mark which of the four ingredients you're guessing about, and then choose any one of the nine ingredient types as your guess. The collect guess is the high risk, high reward option. You could lose a point if you get it wrong, but you could gain up to four points for being correct. Here again, write the name, plate, and ingredient position, and then mark the box on this three by three grid, which corresponds to the position of the ingredient that you believe it to be. You may only make a guess from this 3x3 three three grid. These extra recipe ingredient shelves are only shown for orientation purposes. And you can't make a collect guess about an ingredient type not presently in the pantry. Once all players have made a guess, or chosen not to, resolve first the think guesses, then the collect guesses in turn order. If you've made a think guess, Take one of your four think markers and place it onto this grid of the matching ingredient. So here it's purple's left ingredient, cream. 
there can be at most one think guess per opponent per ingredient in your recipe. Each player has four total think markers and can therefore make at most four think guesses per game. For the think guesses, nothing else happens at this point. You don't find out whether you're right or not until someone has made a collect guess on that ingredient. Now resolve the collect guesses. The player whose ingredient is being guessed now announces whether the guess is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, so in this case, if this is egg, then reveal the token and rotate the marker in the pantry 45 degrees. Continue around the table to see whether any other player has made this same correct guess on the same turn. If only one player made this collect guess, give that player four points. If multiple players made that same correct guess, give each such player two points. If any player has previously made a correct think guess on that ingredient, give the player one point before all think guesses, correct or incorrect, are removed from the game. Next, the player whose ingredient was correctly collected now gains a benefit in the form of points tokens. Draw three tiles from the stack and look at them secretly. Each of them will give you either a number of points ranging between one and three, or may have a hybrid benefit on it, which may include points and the right to look at one of the secret recipe ingredients on the pantry shelves. Choose the one you wish to keep, keeping it secret from the other players, and then discard the others face down. These will get shuffled back into the draw deck once the draw deck is empty, meaning the good benefits will be diluted as the game goes on. Tokens with the victory points are kept secret until the end of the game and scored during endgame scoring, while tokens with the in-game benefit can be revealed at any time and you claim any points plus the benefit immediately when you do so. Finally, remove correctly collected ingredients from the game entirely and replenish from the pantry bag. If, on the other hand, a collect guess is incorrect, then the player who owns the ingredient announces that it was an incorrect guess without revealing the tile. Think markers on that ingredient are not resolved, and the player who made the guess loses one point. Players should keep an eye on everything they've seen during the discussion phase. It's likely they'll be able to make some more deductive conclusions. And then to finish your turn, gather up all the clue markers and hand the basket to the next player clockwise. The first time each player moves from five to six points, they collect a tea break token. This has two effects. Firstly, at the end of the turn on which you gained it, all players get to ask a tea break question. Choose any other player and choose one of the nine ingredient types. Give the player secretly the card with your question on it. They will tick either yes or no based on whether any one of their four secret ingredients matches the ingredient you've asked about. This is a simple yes no question. You don't get to find out anything about the position, just whether or not there is one or more of that ingredient in that player's recipe. And both the question and answer are kept secret from all other players at the table. The other thing you can do is that at any time on your turn, or before the discussion phase of another player's turn, you can spend your tea break token to sweep out the pantry. After spending the token, but before sweeping, you may protect one row or column in the grid. Then each other player may optionally also protect one row or column. Once everyone has either had the chance or decline, discard all unprotected ingredients to the discard pile and replace them from the bag as you normally would. Once all four of your ingredients have been collected, your turn changes slightly in that instead of giving a clue about one of your own ingredients, you'll use the clue tokens to ask a public question about another player's ingredient. Choose the clue type and column as usual. The player who owns the ingredient will now announce whether you've made a correct or incorrect clue combination, 
In this case, the player would say yes, because the flower is not in that column. In this way, you're still putting clues and information out into the world, and you are allowed to look at the recipe shelf ingredient that you placed your token next to. The game end is triggered when only one player has unrevealed ingredients remaining. Keep playing until either all players have had the same number of turns, or until all of that player's ingredients have been revealed as well. Think tokens on unrevealed ingredients are not resolved. Players now reveal their hidden points tokens and add those to the points they've scored on the track. The player with the highest score wins, and if tied, whoever scored the most points from points tokens breaks the tie. And that's how to play Secret Recipe. We are using a prototype copy of the game, so the rules and components are not final, and once again, the two player rules are still in development. And do check out the project page for the game, we'll put a link to that in the description below. And thanks so much for watching, please like, subscribe, and let me know and share this video if you enjoyed, and have a great day. See you next time.